with just a hint of sunrise. We headed from the camp down an ever so slight constant grade to the racetrack. This old lake bed is one of the flattest places on earth, besides Iowa. Its grade only changes 1.5 inches from end to end. Three miles long and two miles wide, the lake probably dried out around 10,000 years ago. It averages three to four inches of rain per year. Not only is the racetrack rarely visited, it's secluded in retrospect to Death Valley, which is the largest park in the lower 48. The main reason people come here is to see the world famous sailing stones. Until recently, scientists were still disagreeing about the way they were formed. Not too long ago, because of a time-lapse camera, we now know that when the lake gets rainwater and freezes overnight, strong winds can push the melting sheets of ice in the morning and create a powerful ice shove that can move a large stone up to five meters per minute. We couldn't believe we finally got to see this place in person. And standing here, you realize how giant this flat lake bed really is. Some rugged terrain above the valley brings you to an old mine. And the view reveals the camp, as well as making the racetrack look so close and so tiny. such a desolate and inhospitable place. It felt a little hairy challenging the vehicle a little bit, but it did just fine. Heading north to exit the valley, as you climb, you get an insane circling view of the racetrack. At the point of the range to the east lies Yubahibi Crater. This volcanic caldera is a half mile across and 600 feet deep. Some speculate that the explosion to create this could have been 300 years ago. U-turning to the east around Yubahibi, we hit pavement and it felt amazing for a second. Heading south through the valley and passing through Furnace Creek, the hottest place on earth at a record 134 degrees Fahrenheit, we'd finally be hitting the Badwater Basin area, which is the prime spot in Death Valley. In a 1930s guidebook, it was said that only the devil could play golf here. These salt clusters are so treacherously shaped that the last thing you'd want to do is take a spill. As we travel down the valley to its lowest point and the lowest point in the US, 
it starts to really show signs of when the valley was Lake Manly, an ancient saltwater lake that was up to 1,000 feet deep. The lowest spot in the valley is 282 feet below sea level. As the water evaporates, the salt forms natural hexagonal patterns. The sodium chloride is the majority of what's found, but also are calcite, gypsum, and borax. Expansion and contraction of salt crystals form these patterns until the next flood, which washes all this beauty back to a new canvas to start all over again. The drainage system of this basin is 9,000 square miles, larger than New Hampshire. The few salty pools that form are home to unique life, including the badwater snail. They only exist in this valley, which is almost without water to begin with. Climbing up the east side of Badwater Basin, the terrain's color starts to diversify. Visible here are some great observations of alluvian fans, which are triangular patterns of sediment fanning outward. They're caused as a steep grade starts to level out, slowing the velocity of the water and the sediments flow and creating a backup. The oxidation of different metal concentrations here produces such an amazing, perfect pastel arrangement. The reds and yellows and pinks are iron-based. The purple is manganese, and the green is mica. Unplanar painters from all over the world are said to be drawn to this exact spot for the colors, the natural energy, and the uniqueness. The colors were really starting to come out of the sky, so we had to hustle to higher ground. Up at Zabriskie Point, above Badwater Basin, the last bits of light illuminated the vast valley. The view was powerful. We have nothing more to say about that.